and Spencer is coming through on the inside. Spencer's got the message. The hunger squirts into the lead. It's Spencer who leads going into the chicane. Lawson is in... In the history of Grand Prix motorcycle racing, few names evoke as much respect and dread as the Honda NSR 500. For nearly two decades, this machine was not merely a motorcycle. It was a symbol of Honda's technological dominance. However, the road to the pinnacle of glory was not smooth. It was born of failure, shaped by ruthless competition, and refined by the courage to break conventional rules. This is the story of how Honda, a company that originally despised two-stroke engines, created the greatest two-stroke monster of all time. The story begins in the late 1970s, when Honda decided to return to premier class 500cc racing after a long hiatus. The company's founder, Soichiro Honda, was a purist who deeply loved four-stroke engines. He considered the two-strokes, which dominated racing at the time, to be crude, noisy, and dirty technology. Therefore, Honda insisted on winning on their own terms, using a four-stroke engine. The problem was that regulations at the time limited engines to a maximum of four cylinders. To match the explosive power of a 500 cubic centimeter two-stroke, a four-stroke engine had to rev at incredibly high RPMs, much like a V8. Since V8s were prohibited, Honda engineers created the Honda NR500, a unique motorcycle with oval-shaped pistons. This concept theoretically allowed them to cram eight valves per cylinder, as if it were a V8 forced into a four-cylinder body. However, the reality on the racetrack was bitter. The NR500 became a disastrous project. The engine was overly complex, often blew up, was hard to start, and heavy. The British press cruelly dubbed the NR abbreviation as Never Ready. After years of humiliation and spending fantastic amounts of research funds, Honda's management finally swallowed their pride. They realized that to win, they had to play dirty, using two-stroke technology like their rivals. In 1982, the Honda NS500 was born. Honda refused to simply copy Suzuki or Yamaha, who used square four or V4 engines. Honda chose a different path by creating a V3 engine. The logic was simple. A three-cylinder engine was lighter, slimmer, and had fewer moving parts, meaning less internal friction. Although the NS500 was down about 10 to 15 horsepower compared to its four-cylinder rivals, the bike possessed extraordinary agility in the corners. This total balance strategy proved to be genius. Freddie Spencer, a talented young rider from the United States, was able to exploit the NS500's agility to dance through corners, compensating for the power deficit on the straights. In the 1983 season, Spencer successfully rode the NS500 to a world championship, delivering Honda's first title in the modern 500 CC era. However, this victory was only the beginning of the real technology war. While Honda celebrated success with their unique V3 engine, Yamaha was preparing a weapon of mass destruction. Yamaha realized that the future of racing lay in high-powered V4 engines. They developed the YZR 500 series 0W61 1982, which was later refined into the 0W70 series in 1983. Yamaha's biggest threat wasn't just their V4 engine, but their chassis. Yamaha introduced an aluminum frame called the Delta Box. Unlike the conventional steel pipe frames Honda used at the time, the Delta Box offered extraordinary rigidity. With this stiff chassis, Kenny Roberts, the Yamaha legend, could transmit the savage power of the V4 engine to the asphalt more efficiently without the bike twisting uncontrollably. But Kenny Roberts wins, Kenny Roberts wins. The 1983 season witnessed a classic duel between the agility of the Honda NS500 and the raw power of the Yamaha YZR500. Freddie Spencer and Kenny Roberts fought tooth and nail. One of the most iconic moments occurred at the Swedish GP, Anderstorp circuit. Heading into the final lap, Spencer knew he would lose on the straight against the Yamaha V4. His only chance was in the final corner. Spencer executed a very late braking maneuver forcing his bike up the inside of Roberts. Both ran wide off the track and onto the dirt. Spencer managed to get on the gas first and won the race. Although Spencer won the 1983 world title by a razor-thin margin, Honda Racing Corporation engineers could not sleep soundly. 
They knew the era of the three-cylinder engine was over. Yamaha was getting faster, and the new generation of Michelin radial tires required massive power to work maximally. Honda had to build a new, more powerful bike. They had to build a V4. 1984 marked the official birth of the legendary name NSR 500, code NV0A. Honda finally switched to a single crankshaft V4 configuration to chase Yamaha's power advantage. However, the Honda engineer's biggest fear was weight. They worried the V4 engine would make the bike heavy and hard to turn, eliminating the handling advantage they had in the NS500 era. To address this, Honda conducted a design experiment that was extremely radical, even by today's standards. They flipped the position of the bike's main components. The fuel tank was moved to the bottom of the engine, in the belly area, the space usually occupied by the exhaust. Conversely, the four exhaust pipes were routed snaking over the top of the engine, passing under a dummy tank cover. The goal was to lower the center of gravity as much as possible, to keep the bike agile. On paper, this idea was brilliant. On the actual track, it was a nightmare. The first problem was heat. With four glowing expansion chambers snaking right under his chest and between his arms, Freddie Spencer felt like he was being roasted alive. This high temperature also affected carburetor performance because the intake air became too hot and less dense. The second and most fatal problem was handling. Honda engineers forgot to account for the dynamics of shifting weight. When the race started with a full tank at the bottom, the bike felt very stable and planted. However, as fuel burned off and the bottom tank emptied, the bike drastically lost weight down low. The bike's center of gravity shifted wildly, causing the front tire to lose pressure and traction. Spencer often felt the bike become unstable and terrifying toward the end of races. Furthermore, the massive engine torque often caused the carbon fiber rear wheels to crack under the stress. Freddie Spencer, though managing to win a few early rounds, eventually gave up. Midway through the season, he asked Honda to prepare his old three-cylinder NS500. The 1984 NSR500 experiment was deemed a failure but it taught Honda a valuable lesson. Innovation must not come at the expense of the rider's comfort and feeling. Learning from the mistakes of 1984, Honda launched a revised version, NV0B, in 1985 with a conventional design. Tank on top, exhausts on the bottom. This bike was a massive success. Freddie Spencer did the impossible by winning both the 250cc and 500cc world titles in the same year. After the Spencer era ended due to injury, the baton passed to the tough Australian rider, Wayne Gardner. In the 1986 to 1987 period, the character of the NSR 500 transformed into a horsepower monster. The engine was incredibly strong, but the power delivery was violent. The power band was very narrow. The bike felt empty in the low revs, then suddenly exploded with full power in the upper revs. This wild character earned the NSR 500 a reputation as a dangerous motorcycle. Gardner often suffered high sides, incidents where the rear tire loses traction and then suddenly regains it, catapulting the rider into the air. However, with his immense physical strength and rodeo riding style, Gardner managed to tame the beast and became world champion in 1987. A philosophical turning point occurred in 1989. Eddie Lawson, the reigning world champion from Yamaha, shockingly moved to Honda. Lawson brought along legendary chief mechanic, Irv Kanemoto. Upon first trying the NSR 500, Lawson was shocked at how stiff and harsh the Honda chassis was. Honda had thought the chassis had to be as hard as a rock to withstand the engine's power. Lawson and Kanemoto taught Honda the Yamaha philosophy. A chassis needs flexibility. When a bike is leaned over in a corner, the suspension cannot work vertically. The chassis itself must flex slightly to absorb bumps in the asphalt. After much debate, Honda finally built a more flexible chassis. The result was instant. Lawson won the 1989 world title, proving that big power requires gentle control. Entering the 1990s, 500cc engine power was approaching 170 to 
to 180 horsepower, surpassing the rear tire's ability to grip the asphalt. Riders complained that the rear tire would constantly spin, coming out of corners, wasting time and destroying the rubber. Until 1991, NSR 500 engines used a screamer ignition system. In this system, the four cylinders fired sequentially at even intervals every crankshaft rotation. The sound was a high-pitched, sharp shriek. The downside was that because power pulses were delivered continuously without pause, the rear tire never had a moment of respite to recover grip. The tire was constantly tortured. In 1992, Honda introduced the greatest innovation in the history of the NSR 500, the Big Bang engine. Honda engineers altered the crankshaft and ignition timing so that the four cylinders fired almost simultaneously in a short burst, followed by a long silent pause before the next cycle began. Why was this genius? That silent pause, though only a fraction of a second, gave the rear tire rubber a chance to relax and regain static traction, grip, on the asphalt. The effect was extraordinary. The bike became much easier to control under acceleration. The engine note changed from a scream to a heavy, guttural growl, droning sound. Mick Doohan, Honda's new star, immediately dominated the early 1992 season with this engine before a severe leg injury at Assen stopped him. Mick Doohan returned from injury with a will of steel. Since his right leg could not bend fully to operate the rear brake, Honda engineers created a special rear brake operated by a thumb lever on the left handlebar. Starting in 1994, Doohan and the NSR500 became an unbeatable entity. The peak of Doohan's brilliance occurred in 1997. By then, all rival manufacturers, Yamaha Suzuki, had copied Honda's Big Bang engine because it was considered easier to ride. Doohan, bored because his rivals were getting closer, made a bold move. He asked Honda to bring back the old style engine, the Wild Screamer. When Doohan started winning with the Screamer engine, rival riders panicked. They thought, if Doohan is using a Screamer, we have to use a Screamer to win. They forced their teams to switch engines. The result was a disaster. Rival riders did not have Doohan's ultra-fine throttle control. They crashed high-sided and scared themselves because the bikes became too aggressive. Meanwhile, Doohan cruised to victory in 12 of 15 races that season. He defeated his opponents not just with machinery, but by breaking their minds. 